The Great Gildersleeve. A special rebroadcast for all you soldiers, sailors, and Marines of the United Nations. Listen to another amazing episode in the life of the great Gildersleeve. Now, what of the great Gildersleeve? Well, there's a little ceremony they go through at Gildersleeve's house every now and then. It starts before breakfast, and it goes like this. Oh, my goodness, here he comes. Miss Marjorie, honey, call your uncle quick. Uncle Mort, Leroy, call Uncle Mort. He's up see why you can't tend to these things. You should have carried this out last night. It's heavy, Yonk. I might sprain myself. Yeah, out of the way. <laughs> Nobody does any work around here but me. Oh, gosh, I'm only a boy. Here, grab hold. Give me a hand with this. Okay. Hey, wait. Go on ahead, Leroy, and tell him to wait. Oh, says to wait. Well, come on. I haven't got all day. <clears throat> yeah, who does he think he is? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, get down off of there. I told you not to climb on wagons. I wasn't climbing. I saw you. I was just looking. Come on, come on. Let's have that sail. Yeah, I'll be right there. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. I forgot it was Thursday. They all forget. Whoa, whoa there. Hey, wait a minute. I can't accept this. What do you mean? What's the idea of putting tin cans in the garbage? Listen, are you going to tell me how to run my garbage? I can't accept it. Well, I'd like to know why not. Because we feed that stuff to hogs. You want to kill them? Now, just a minute. I'm a taxpayer here. No tin cans, no paper, no bottles. That's the rule. Listen, brother, I'm a taxpayer, and you're working for me. I'll thank you to keep a civil tongue in your head. And you can keep your garbage. <laughs> I've got a good mind to report you. Go ahead. Get out. You pay! Wait a minute. Come back here. All right, this garbage is going to stay here, you understand? Right here in the street. I hope the neighbors complain. I hope they call the Board of Health. That's telling them, Uncle. You keep out of this. Come on inside and eat your breakfast. Well, go on, dictator. <laughs> That's an outrage, that's what it is. Darned outrage. Pass the sugar. Leroy, the sugar. It's right in front of him. <laughs> if I ran the water department the way they run the Department of Sanitation, where do they get off to sell our garbage anyway? But, Uncle, it's no good to us as long as they get rid of it. Well, I don't know. I don't understand it, but it's probably a swindle of some kind. All kinds of rackets these days. For all I know, there's a black market in garbage. <laughs> Leroy, I asked you for the sugar. How many times do I have it's to... It's right under your nose. Oh. Jeez. All I do is pay the bills around here. Ready the eggs, Miss Gilsey? I just started on my cereal, Bertie. It's taken me so long to get the sugar. Well, I'll take them out and keep them warm, then. No, no. Just put them down. I don't want to be a bother to anybody. I'll eat them cold. Uh, yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. No bacon, Bertie? No, sir. I'm sorry. Well, you can't eat eggs without bacon. Ye gods, what's bacon and eggs without bacon? I'm sorry, Mr. Gilfrey, but I ain't been able to buy any bacon in the store for putting out week now. What? That's a fact. The man said he might be able to let me have a few slices tomorrow. Oh, he did. Well, that's very sweet of him. How would he like it if we took our trade somewhere else? Just ask him that, Bertie. There ain't no place else to take it, Mr. Gilfrey. None of the store's got any bacon. You hardly got any kind of meat at all. Gosh, Bertie, you have to have bacon. What are we going to do? I don't know, Miss Gilfrey. Looks like we're going to do it out. No bacon. 
Gosh. Bacon and eggs. Liver and bacon. Hot cakes with bacon. Everything depends on bacon. <laughs> well, children, I guess we're going to have to tighten our belts, that's all. Maybe we better plan another victory garden this year. We can't plant bacon. <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> but I'll tell you what we could do. What? We could raise pigs. Yeah, how about it? Oh, Uncle Mort, pigs are so dirty. Nonsense, my dear. That's nothing but a superstition. Pig is one of the... Pig is one of the cleanest animals alive. If you give them a chance. <laughs> now, you could tend them, Leroy. How'd you like to be a swine herd? I know it was going to get around to me sometime. <laughs> Well, there's no work to it. All you do, you build a pigsty, and once a day you throw in the garbage. Say, by George, that's it. That's how we get rid of our garbage. We feed the pigs, and it costs us nothing. And in three months, bacon. Oh, we can eat. Now, how can we get a hold of a pig? Where do you write somewhere for them? Cheers, Roebuck. <laughs> I know. I'll ask Floyd Munson. His brother Earl used to be a butcher. Maybe he's got some contacts. I didn't know Floyd's brother was a butcher. How do you think Floyd got to be a barber? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, yes, sir. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll just stop in and see Floyd on the way downtown. Excuse me, Auntie Floyd. Have you a second cup of coffee? Not this morning, Bertie. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Got to see a man about a pig. Did he say pig? <laughs> you stick with me, Bertie, and you'll be eating bacon when everybody else in this town is biting his nails. <laughs> Commissioner, you know me. I'm glad to do you a favor any time. Only thing is, my brother Earl's in the service now. Yeah, I know Floyd. So I've been kind of out of touch with meat lately. However, as a fellow's got the meat department over at... I don't think you understand, Floyd. What I want is a live pig. Oh, live, you say? Well, now, there, my cousin might be able to help you out. The one that used to run the livery stable? It's got a little place just outside of town. Remember the... He's the one we borrowed the sleigh from? That's him. A little place there, four or five acres, cows and chickens and so on. Nothing much, but it's a living, you know what I mean. I'm sure he'd be glad to loan you the use of a pig. I don't want to borrow a pig, Floyd. I want to buy one. Oh, I, I thought maybe you was going to play a joke on somebody. You know, grease them maybe and turn them loose in the meeting. <laughs> Nothing like that. Well, um, if I ain't being too inquisitive, Commissioner... It's in the nature of an investment, Floyd. An investment for the future. Oh, hogs going up? Oh, yeah. should I know? Well, you get around the city hall there. I thought you might have heard something. This has nothing to do with that. I'm buying this pig for my own personal use, Floyd. In due course, I hope to eat him. Well, now you're talking. Why don't you go out and see my cousin there? He might be able to put you next to a good pig if he ain't got one himself. I tell you what. <laughs> tell you what I'll do. You drop by for me around closing time, and I'll go out there with you. Good idea. I'll do it. Thanks, Floyd. Thanks very much. Glad to do you the favor, Commissioner. Glad to do you the favor. Just remember, it was me that did it for you. That's all. Okay. Thanks, Irene. Uh, what's the dope, Floyd? Cousin ain't home. Talked to his wife. Says there ain't but one left out of the litter. They sold the rest. Says we can go around back and look at it, though. It's for sale. Well, let's go. This way. You know, maybe I ought to have two pigs, Floyd. What do you think? Two would breed faster. <laughs> maybe you could, uh... Maybe you could pick up another someplace. Yeah, I could always advertise. Yeah. Well... This looks like the sty. Where's the pig? You know, the summer's around, if my nose don't deceive me. <laughs> Maybe under the shelter there. Oh, brother, you're right. Look there, Floyd, uh, back in the corner. Why, it's as big as a house. Oh, no, no, no. That's the sow. The little one there is yours. Where? I don't even see it. On the other side, pushing up against her there. That little one? <laughs> well, what do you want for two weeks, old? Give it time. It'll grow. Look at the mother. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you're right. Okay, I'll take it. Okay. Uh, how do I get it? I guess you go in there after it. <laughs> that big old sow lying there? She won't hurt you. Listen, I've heard of people getting their leg bitten off by sows when they were mad. 
Particularly if you molest her young. Ah, oh, she won't hurt you. I'd walk right up to her if I wanted to. Go ahead, then. I don't want to. <laughs> You're a fine friend, Floyd. Well, it's your pig. Well, it's your cousin. Now, don't tell me you're afraid, Commissioner. Not the great Gildersleeve. No, I'm not afraid. Only, well, open the gate. She's looking at me. Well, sure. Sure she's looking at you. What of it? You're looking at her, ain't you? <laughs> what are you scared of? I don't like her expression. Pigs ain't got no expression. Yeah, piggy, piggy, piggy. Nice, Piggy. Wiggy, wiggy, wiggy. Come on, Piggy. Doesn't want to come. Why don't you just make a quick grab? Oh, no, that's no way. Here, Piggy. Oink, oink, oink. You never fool him that way. Sneak up on him. Well, you say so. Wait a minute. Floyd. Yeah? That big one. How do we know she's a sow? <laughs> How do we know she's not a boar? You got my cousin's word for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here I go. Now, don't get alarmed, madam. I'm not going to hurt your child. I'm not going to molest your young. Grab him. I got him. I got the little devil. Let me out of here. The great sleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. to the great Gildersleeve and his experiment in homegrown pork. Two days have passed since the arrival of the pig, whom we find now in the parlor with Leroy. Oi, oi. No, no, don't, Tiger. That's a good boy. Now, when I say pig, sit up like this. Oi, 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 oi. No, Tiger, don't say anything until you sit up. Look, I'll show you. Sit on your hind feet like this, and then go oink, oink. <laughs> 
stuff he says will be just the thing. Oink, oink. All right, Leroy, take your little friend outside. Okay. Come on, Mark, let's see if we can get him to stay in his bed. He doesn't seem to like that either. The judge, what do you think of him? What do I think of him? I wouldn't give you two red points for him all cooked and ready to serve. Well, he'll go. <laughs> He's not going to die of lonesomeness either. Oh, Gildy, you're not thinking of raising a whole flock of pigs. You can't stop nature, Judge. Oh, <laughs> uh, this must be Peavy. Wait till he sees our little pig. <laughs> oh, well, Mr. Goldstein, I, I just stopped by with that pig prescription. Uh, great. Come on in, Peavy. Glad to see you. Yeah, good afternoon, Greg. Right? Hello, Peavy. You think you can cure this new member of the Gildersleeve family? Yes. Watch your step, Horace. You think you can fix us up, Peavy? Hmm, oh, isn't sick, is he? Oh, no, just a picky appetite. I want to get him onto his regular diet as soon as I can. Well, I've got something here that ought to start him feeding. Stuff called baby malt. Baby malt? Hmm, it's put up for babies, but it's only doing just as well for an infant pig. Supposed to be very stimulating to the appetite. Uh, care for a smell? No thanks, Peavy. It does? Smells delicious. No, thank you. The question is not how it smells to me, but how it smells to a pig, Peavy. Two very different things. Sure. Uh, well, you may be right. <laughs> Whatever it is, he better have some, and right away. He hasn't eaten since he's been here. Oh, Bertie! Come in, Miss Gill, please. Yes, sir. You want something? Ask Leroy to bring the pig in here, please, Bertie. And we'll need a pan with a little milk in it, too, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. You better warm the milk a little, Bertie. Yes, sir. He already turned up his nose with some milk this morning, Mr. Gill, please. Well, we're putting something with it, Bertie. Give it a little zinc. Okay, you the doctor. I don't know, but things like this house is crazy or anything. <laughs> Uh, once this pig starts eating, Peavy, we got the meat shortage licked. Ever raised pigs? No, but I did raise chickens once back in 1918. Oh, chickens. Uh, well, I like pigs better. More variety. Mm, maybe so. All I know is we started off with 50 cents worth of chicks, and in three months they looked just like the chickens at the butchers, except that they were walking around. Why, George, maybe you ought to raise pigs and chickens. Are they good eating, Peavy? 
And I never found out, Mr. Gillespie. Mrs. Peavy got so fond of them, we never heard any. They died of old age, finally. <laughs> Well, a little food's all he needs. Here, just put the pan of milk on the floor, Marjorie. Hold on to the pig, Leroy. We don't want him stepping in it. Okay. Now, how much of this stuff, Peavy? Well, we'll start off with just a little. Yeah, just that's enough. Now, put him down in front of it, Leroy, so he can get the aroma. Okay. Here we are, Tiger. Nice warm supper Mr. Peavy fixed for you. Oink, 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 Tiger. Yeah, leave him alone, Leroy. You may try for it in a minute. I don't think he likes it. I'm afraid you're right, Leroy. Well, uh, leave the rest of the bottle anyway, Mr. Gillis. Please, he may grow up to it. I suppose I have to keep it now it's open. How much is the stuff, Peavy? Well, it's, uh, six fifty. It's got minerals in it. What, platinum? No. <laughs> only paid ten dollars for the whole pig. Ten dollars for the pig, six dollars for the baby malt. Pig weighs three pounds. That's five dollars a pound for bacon. <laughs> Leroy, time for you to go to bed. I don't feel like going to bed. I'm so worried about Tiger. Well, don't worry about him. He'll start eating tomorrow. I think maybe he's sick, Uncle. He's shivering again. How would it be if Tiger slept with me, Uncle? Then he'd be nice and warm. No, Leroy. Oh, gee, why not? You wouldn't sleep a wink and neither would the pig. Hey, yes, he would. What makes you think so? He slept with me last night. You, Leroy! <laughs> he slept slow. I heard him snoring. Without the pig, I thought it was you, Unky. <laughs> My dear, I do not snore. Are you kidding? You. Stop this nonsense. I've let you put the pig's bed in the cellar. Now, that's enough. Just put him down there and then go to bed yourself. Oh, gee, Unc. Well, come on, Tiger. Where are you going? Yes. It's me. He's catching cold. Tiger! Yes. See? Sounds bad, doesn't it? He's sick. I'll bet he's got a temperature. Now, Leroy, let's not get excited. The pig may have a little cold, that's all. His forehead feels hot. His nose is dry. I better sit up with him, Unc. You do nothing of the kind. I couldn't sleep anyway, not with him down in the cellar, sneezing and wheezing all by himself. Oink, oink. That's pretty weak, Unc. Huh? Don't worry, Tiger. We'll pull you through. You don't think he's going to get pneumonia, do you, Unc? Now, Leroy, don't worry about it. You run along to bed, and I'll sit up with a pig if I have to. Will you? Honest, Unc? Yeah, now run along, will you? You too, Marjorie. You're sure you don't want me to stay down with you? No, no, run along. Okay. Here, you hold him under here, this way. Yeah. Huh? Oh, all right. Good night, Tiger. I hope you feel better in the morning. Oink, oink. Good night, Uncle Mort. Oink, oink, Leroy. <laughs> You comfortable, Tiger? <laughs> Let's see. This little part is pork chop. This little part is ham. This little part along here is bacon. Man, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Cute little fella. Blue eyes. <laughs> Almost ashamed to eat him. Oink, oink, Tiger. Oink? Yeah. Well, that's better. Now we understand each other. <laughs> you got to get your sleep, young man. You'll never grow up to be bacon and lard and pork chops and ham. Well, now you get a pig to go to sleep. Tell him a bedtime story, I guess. Well, uh, let me see. Uh, once upon a time, there was a little pig. Quite a handsome little pig. With a black spot. Right in the middle of his little forehead. Just like you. He lived in a cottage near the edge of a big forest. Mm-hmm. And one day, while he was out picking strawberries for his breakfast, he saw a little old woman in a gray cloak coming toward him. Well, yeah, thought the little pig, maybe this is my fairy godmother. Ah, but he was wrong. She was a butcher in disguise. Anyway, he went up to her and... Well, uh, asleep already. Darn it, I don't dare put him down. He'll wake up. It's a sleep tiger. <laughs> Good little pig. Sleep and get fat, tiger. <laughs> <laughs> mm, 